Welcome to the Rapid Revolution. Today's video will explore what technology is key for flying the SpaceX Starship, what type of missions it can carry out, and why these missions will propel SpaceX's vision of going to Mars. While it may seem counterintuitive, executing commercial missions will actually accelerate, not distract and slow down, SpaceX and Elon Musk's dream of going to Mars. Right now, every time a rocket launches, the intention is insane and is wonderful. However, when rocket launches become more commonplace and happen multiple times a day, and the attention for each one fades just a little bit, rocket launching technology will be truly wonderful, even though it might appear a little boring. First off, let's talk about what technology and engineering is unique to the Starship and will build the foundation of its mission capabilities. A few of the most notable examples are the landing legs, the Raptor engine, the fins or flaps, and space refueling systems. Firstly, the landing legs are currently being developed on the Starship prototypes, and while their exact design isn't finished, approximately four to eight legs will be utilized as the Starship touches down. The Starship is sort of like a large building that can fly. The legs will be structurally designed to support the weight of the ship and deploy exactly when necessary. As the Starship is touching down, the legs will self-level, likely using hydraulics, where each leg can position itself at a unique height. Because each leg is independent, the Starship can land on rough terrain and also slightly lean the ship to weather high winds more safely. Secondly, powering the ship with approximately 31 Raptor engines will give the ship an unbelievable amount of thrust. Delivering 500 pounds of thrust is on par with the RS-25 engine which powered the space shuttles. However, the Raptor will likely have the highest thrust to weight ratio, producing the most thrust with the least engine weight. High thrust to weight ratio will allow more cargo to be put on the ship. Check out my latest video for more info on the Raptor. Additionally, the interior ring of Raptor engines will gimbal, basically pointing a little off-center to help control the Starship. Gimbling the outer engines would produce much larger changes in direction for the exact same degree of movement compared to the inner engines. SpaceX is going for a nudge here, not a push. Thirdly, the fins or the flaps on the Starship, both at the top and the bottom, will provide air braking upon re-entry. By changing how perpendicular the flaps are to the airflow, the Starship will maintain its desired path and position, operating safely under control. The flaps will move extremely quickly as they are controlled, sort of like the flaps on a plane. And just like airplane flaps, which can point straight back on the wing to become inactive, the flaps on the Starship will be able to tug against the body of the rocket to deactivate right as the Starship is descending straight down to land. Lastly, the Starship will also be able to refuel in space using a few different pieces of technology. As two starships approach each other end to end, they will connect to transfer liquid methane and oxygen. Because liquids behave differently in microgravity than they do on Earth, the starships will employ control thrusters to maintain a little extra velocity. These thrusters will be small eulogy engines that can fire independently from the Raptor engines and be placed on other parts of the ship. By moving very intentionally, the liquid in the tank will settle near the pumping inlet so it can be moved from one ship tank to the other. Other features such as guide vanes and screens can be used to control the flow of liquid out of the tank and block any vapor bubbles that might form. Ultimately, refueling starships will extend their range or their cargo capacity capabilities. While SpaceX will continue iterating on the engineering design of the Starship, these features are definitely here to stay, enabling the Starship to reach commercial flight readiness. In the past, humanity has launched all sorts of satellites, telescopes, secret government stuff, and even the International Space Station into space. As Starship enters the market, more commercial flights will be undertaken than ever before. So let's explore some potential missions and orbit-bound pieces of technology. Firstly, point-to-point -point travel around the Earth in as little as 30 minutes has been claimed by SpaceX. Because safety regulations to fly over land will not be initially met, after all this is extremely uncharted territory, the Starships will take off and land on offshore platforms. This will slash travel times, such as flights from New York to Australia or others, which normally take anywhere between 5 to 15 hours, down to about 30 minutes no matter the starting point and the destination. However, while this can bring in revenue for SpaceX, they will have to be actively using that rocket to make money. We'll touch on that more later. Secondly, instead of constantly launching people around the Earth, SpaceX can generate a higher margin revenue stream through its Starlink project. Starships can carry approximately 400 Starlink satellites to build an internet beaming satellite network, providing coverage to everywhere on Earth. While Starlink satellites are a matter of controversy for astronomers using telescopes, the satellites are likely here to stay. 
but hopefully different engineering features on the satellites will reduce their footprint on astronomy. Or perhaps more telescopes can be launched in space. Not only can SpaceX launch their Starlink satellites on their own, they can launch them simultaneously with other satellites on board. When someone chooses SpaceX to launch their satellite, SpaceX can potentially offer a lower cost by using rideshare. Basically, they launch the customer satellite and some Starlink satellites on the same rocket, allowing them to make the most of every rocket launch. They can bring in revenue while launching their own satellites. Additionally, Starlink satellites generate more revenue per rocket launch because they make money after the Starship has been used, contrary to earlier when a rocket was required to make money with point-to-point -point travel. Lastly, a potential future type of mission is satellite recovery or space waste cleanup. By hauling satellites or waste out of orbit, SpaceX can reduce the risk of debris projectiles hitting future launched rockets. I like to think of this as preventative maintenance of the space around Earth. Sandra Bullock and gravity, anybody? Additionally, most satellites currently fall out of orbit and burn up in the atmosphere at the end of their life. Instead of destroying all the valuable materials, these satellites could be captured, brought down by Starship, and recycled. Also, this could open up the ability for companies to fix broken satellites by bringing them down to Earth and then relaunching them again after repairs. While these are a few of the mission types Starship can execute, let's now talk about how this will actually accelerate their missions to Mars. Again, these missions aren't a distraction, they are actually essential. Firstly, point-to-point -point travel will allow SpaceX to improve safe transportation of people on the Starship. Not to say that Starship is unsafe, but rather SpaceX will learn how to fine-tune the Starship's operation during takeoff and landing, maximizing comfort of passengers as they travel through the atmosphere and around Earth. This capability will be vital to master before making the long journey to Mars. Additionally, while this won't yield insight on passenger comfort during extended periods in space, it will be necessary to convince the passengers that Starship can safely take people to Mars, otherwise no one would sign up to go. Secondly, Starlink satellite launches will continue to improve cargo arrangements aboard Starship. By maximizing the cargo capacity to meet the 150-ton capability, Starship engineers can increase the last few percentage points of cargo capacity. Every increase in cargo capacity will accelerate the rate of Mars-based construction by bringing as much equipment as possible. Additionally, managing various cargo layouts will allow Starship engineers to safely arrange cargo and maintain desired rocket orientations and operations. Furthermore, the rideshare missions mentioned earlier will improve the ability of SpaceX to handle multiple missions simultaneously. In the near future, SpaceX plans to launch up to a thousand times a year. Ride sharing will allow Starship to maximize the value extracted from each mission and launch, and increase the rate of getting equipment off of Earth and into space for Mars. Additionally, they can continue learning how cargo orientations affect the center of gravity of rockets and how to manage this when flying Starships. Lastly, performing satellite recovery or debris cleanup will improve understanding of maneuverability and control of Starships and microgravity. By learning more about controlling Starships, SpaceX will improve operations with space stations, transferring items between ships, and other future activities. Starships will likely hang out in space briefly before departing between Mars and Earth, so it seems likely that any improvements to control will benefit all subsequent flights. This will accelerate Starship control capabilities, ensuring all equipment and people on Starships make it to Mars, instead of having loss of lives or equipment that could sadden the hearts of humanity or slow down the progression to Mars. Before I close, I will mention a few thoughts that I had while researching this video. Perhaps one day SpaceX will build its own space station around Earth because they might need to transfer items or people between incoming and outbound starships. Also, eventually a starship might need to be fixed in space. Additionally, SpaceX could also accelerate the launch of satellites to help humanity map out our solar system much finer. Maybe SpaceX could even become a space debris cleanup contractor. The accumulation of space debris is a big fear after all. Lastly, if you haven't watched The Expanse on Amazon Prime, check it out and make sure to stick through the first couple seasons because it gets really good. Thank you so much for watching this Rapid Red production. Please drop a like and subscribe. I'll be doing a giveaway for my subscribers once I reach 10,000 subscribers. I've changed this from 1,000 because I expected that goal to take a little longer, but this should still happen pretty soon, so, so please comment, like, and subscribe to enter the giveaway. Also, thank you guys for all the comments you've been leaving. For this video, leave a comment about what type of missions do you want to see Starship undertake? How soon do you bet SpaceX will establish a Mars colony? What other videos do you want to see about space technology? Drop your comments and thoughts below. Also, if you want to talk about technology more, 
Come check out the Discord and come join the revolution. We are having awesome conversations, so thanks to everyone that's joining and let's keep it up. If you want to check out Rapper Rev on Twitter and Instagram, check out the links in the description. Also, if you enjoyed this video and you want to support the channel even more, head over to the Patreon, the link is in the description, and show Rapid Red some love. All donations help make this content possible. Anybody who donates will have my eternal love, so hopefully that's worth something as well. Well, that wraps it up for this video. Come hop aboard the revolution and see y'all next time.